Hello, my awesome fourth grade artist. I'm back this week and we're starting a new project I think you're gonna like. We are going to be creating these colorful designs based on the artwork of a lady named Alma Thomas. So first of all, let me show you Alma Thomas, a little bit about her. This is Alma Thomas and this is her painting called Resurrection. Alma Thomas was a well-known artist who worked most of her life as an art teacher. It wasn't until she was older that she began painting and got recognition for her painting. Um, she became well-known for her colorful abstract paintings that resemble mosaics. So, in our last lesson, we talked about what abstract art is. And so, it doesn't have to actually look like anything in real life. Her art was about color and shape and how those colors interact with each other. And they look like mosaics because mosaics are pieces of artwork where the artists take tiny things like stones or jewels and they place them together to make a picture. And so you see how her squares and rectangles that she has painted are similar to that. She was born in Georgia in 1891 and then she moved to Washington, D.C., and that's where she lived most of her life, and she died in 1978. But she's special because she was one of the first, uh, especially female African-American artists, to get recognition for her work. So she's very important um, in art history, and I just love her artwork. I love the way her artwork resembles rainbows with all the colors. And so your teacher has a link to show you a video about Alma Thomas, and I hope that before you start this project, you'll get a chance to do that. So let's go back to mine. This is one that I finished, and you're gonna have several options of how you want to do yours. We're gonna talk about painting these designs, and then we're gonna talk about adding a little bit of extra using Sharpies and gel pens. So I'm gonna show you, you can either decide if you, you're gonna, everybody's gonna get a piece of this white paper. This is thick watercolor paper. You need to be thinking about if you want to do a design that is a circle. So you see how I've, I've started out with a circle and I've just get, kept going. This is one that I made using stripes. So I've still kept my rainbow theme, but I've gone vertical with them. You could go vertical, the long side going up and down, or you could go horizontal with it. Either way you turn it. And then here's another one. I haven't quite finished it with my Sharpies and gel pens, but you see I did a part of a circle. So these curved lines, okay? So you be thinking about those three options. You may could even do something like make yours a zigzag pattern, okay? So just be thinking about that. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get a piece of paper like this, and I want you on the back to write your name, your grade, your school, and your teacher. All right, you be doing that. I'm gonna grab a pen, um, no, I don't need a pencil. I'm gonna grab my paintbrush. Okay. So we really don't need to begin by drawing this. I am just going to start showing you how to do the one with the circle. So why don't you just watch me for a few minutes and then we'll talk about it. I don't think you really need to work with me on this one. I think you need to watch and then do yours. So the teachers should have these little containers that you can put the paint in. And I want you on your, on your uh, lesson plan, it's got the colors to use. You mix that with a little bit of white and stir it up and you can put the lid on it so you can use it with multiple classes. Just wipe or spray them down between classes. And you're going to have those colors out. But it's important that you mix it with a little bit of white. It will cre make the uh, paint a little opaque and it will, it will have a thicker appearance. It will look a lot better. Then the students are gonna have the option of three paintbrushes. This is a round paintbrush, and so round paintbrushes are used for making dots or thin lines. And then these flat paintbrushes, there's two sizes, there's a thicker one and a thinner one, they will be used to make those little rectangle or square shapes, okay? So I'm gonna start with my circle in the middle. I'm gonna start <clears throat> with red. So what you need to do is kind of find where you think the middle is. Just kind of look at your paper good and think about the middle and you're going to dip your round brush and paint a circle in the middle. Try to get as close to the middle as you can and just freehand the best you can a circle shape. 
We really don't need to draw because we don't want pencil lines on this. And we want to really take our time and be careful because this is a white sheet of paper. There's going to be a lot of white paper showing and you want to be careful not to, to make messes on the paint and smear it. So I'm starting out with that circle. And now I'm gonna change color. So every time you change color, teachers, you need to have a container of water for the students. Drag your brush around the bottom. And then you need to dry it off. I'm gonna get a paper towel over here. Dry it off good. You don't need a lot of water in this paint. All right, now I'm gonna just pick up a different color. So I think I'm gonna go with blue this time. And you can decide what you wanna do. I think I'm gonna go around it making dots. So when you want to do dots, you take your round brush, you dip it in the blue, and you just kind of touch it to the paper. I'm kind of touching and going around and making circles, dots. And you just stay in your circle shape. Every time it seems like your circles are getting a little too small, you just dip your paintbrush in the paint and get a little more. Okay. Now, every time we go out another layer, we're going to wash our brush, dry it off, and get a different color. This time, I'm going to go with purple. And I'm going to make some little dotted lines. And so, I'm dipping my brush back in, and I'm just kind of making these little dotted lines that will go around. Now you can, if it helps you, let's turn the pages. Let me move this out of the way. Let's turn the paper as we go. And that might, that might help you. I like to do a variety of lines. Now in the one I showed you earlier, Resurrection, Alma Thomas used, just used the same size brush for hers. So if you want all of your little lines and shapes around to be the same, you can do that. Now I'm gonna wash that and now I'm gonna pick up one of my flat brushes. And I'm gonna use yellow this time. So this is one of my flat brushes. This is how we get those square shapes. So I'm just gonna dip it in there and you just drag it and then pick it up. Drag it and pick it up. And then when it starts to get where there's not enough paint, get some more. You can decide how big you want those to be. Really helps if we turn the paper as we go. Get some more paint. See how I'm doing that? Try to be neat, try not to drip paint. It happens sometimes, it's okay. Now I'm gonna, this time I wanna make an even bigger um, rectangle shape. So I'm gonna get my bigger flat brush and I'm gonna use green. Dip it in there, and then we get an even bigger one. So do you see how I'm just going all the way around until I get a circle? Think about your colors. You might wanna make your colors in the order of a rainbow. You may wanna go Roy G. Biff. That's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. You may wanna put cool, uh, rows of cool colors and then rows of warm colors. You may wanna just mix them all up the way that I'm doing. And so I've got that. Now I may wanna go back again with some more dots. So I'm gonna get my clean my brush off and I think this time I will use some orange. Again, remember you dip it. I'm just gonna go around. All right, that's about all I'm gonna do on this one. I think you have the idea. You would go, let me show you my finished one. You would go all the way out till you run out of paper at the top and bottom, and then you would be finished and you would let it dry. So it may take you more than one class period just to get that part painted. So once it's dry, the next step is to go in, and I thought it gave it a little extra by adding these little lines and shapes that I drew, and I used Sharpie and a white gel pen. So I'm gonna show you, because I didn't finish this one. Let me go back and show you also my stripe one. The stripe one is the same way. I used my different brushes to make different size strokes, and I just started on one edge and just kept going. 
Okay, or you can have it go that way. You start at the top and work your way down. So let's look at this one. This was the one that I made that was like the half circle or section of a circle. I'm gonna get a white gel pen. And so in some of my darker colors, that's where the white gel pen would really show up. So like in this blue, those are kind of square shapes. So I'm just, let me get my pen going. It's kind of not going. I think I need another one. I think that one's kind of not working. So let me get another one. Okay, so in that blue, I would just draw these little square shapes. See how that's, see how I'm adding that in there? All it does is really give it a little more detail. All right, and then when you're doing with the Sharpies, so like on the yellow ones, you need to kind of go with a color that's in the same family so it will blend well. So orange and yellow, and I've got this light orange, they're very similar. So in this one, I'm gonna use my Sharpie and I'm gonna go in there like that. Also, you don't need to do all of them. You don't wanna do every one. You wanna leave some of them just solid and we're just adding a little bit extra to, to just to make it stand out a little bit, certain areas of it. So like I may go back up here on these orange ones that's kinda dark and go in with my white like that. Now, it seems like the pen is wanting to go out. I don't know if the paint is messing that up. Teachers, if you find that these gel pens are not wanting to do well in the paint, you may have to just use all Sharpies, but just try. They may have to just kind of go over the lines, kind of how you see that I'm doing. Let me do one more with Sharpie. So I think I'll go back, I'll go again with this light orange color and I'll go in there. See how I'm just kind of mimicking the lines of that shape. All the way through. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and show you my finished one again. I'll show you the finished one of the stripes. So you see here, I didn't do all of them. I left some of them plain and I just went in with some with the lines. So you can do circles. I made some circles in some of them. I made just some little dotted lines. There's my finish one. That I even in the middle of that one, I put a bunch of concentric circles. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. Have fun, take your time, try to keep your white paper as white as you can. And we'll put the good ones of this on Artsonia and we'll also get some of these in the art show. I'll see y'all next time, bye.